Okay, everybody, welcome to my channel. It's your girl, Pila, and you're watching Positive Mommy Vibes. And today, we have a special guest. This is my sister, Aisha, my sister in faith. The reason that we're doing a video together today is because I just think that she's an amazing mom. Oh, and thank you. And Jones. so are you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so this is Positive Mommy Vibes. So mm -hmm. we're trying to share some Positive Mommy Vibes. So today we're just going to have a chit chat session basically. And we're just going to kind of bounce ideas and kind of bounce the different things that we've done with raising our children. She has three beautiful children. I have two beautiful children. And um, yeah, we're just kind of going to really share with you how we handled the typical things that moms go through you know exactly what we do yeah just gonna keep it real with you guys it's not all you know roses. <laughs> no <laughs> is that entirely true <laughs> well i mean yeah i am not any <laughs> don't worry they'll they'll bring you yeah. pick you roses when they're old enough do they pick you roses they do from the garden not roses flowers oh that's sweet see yeah. i want children like that that's why we're interviewing. <laughs> okay, so I guess the first thing I wanted to talk about was... Uh... Yeah, so how did you um, introduce your new babies, your new baby, to your babies? Okay, I let them know when I was about three months or so yeah. that I was expecting uh, a baby, mm -hmm. that they would have uh, another sibling and mm -hmm. um, I encourage them to speak to baby in mummy's womb. Yeah, rub mummy's tummy. Um, read to baby. We, mm. um, you know, we just made sure that we acknowledged her presence. Yeah, you know, and um, obviously there at a time as the belly's getting bigger and such, like it becomes more real. Yeah, as the baby starts moving yeah, and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it becomes real to them, and then they become expectant, they become happy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and then once baby arrives, it just continues. Yeah, okay. So with me, I guess, when it comes to introducing Raheem to Asia, I just, it just happened naturally. He obviously knew my stomach was growing. Mm -hmm. um, actually, that's a lie. When I was about two months, yeah. I noticed that he was being clingy. Mm -hmm. He was being very clingy and he was grabbing onto my leg and he was wanting to hug, hug, hug. And mm. he was very, very like, on me like mm -hmm. it was just all up on me mm -hmm. and so then um i was speaking to my grandma and whatever and they were saying that yeah this is probably because he probably can tell yeah. that maybe there's a baby oh. coming or that something's happening yeah and, they're spiritual um, very spiritual these little people so i was like really like you think so mm -hmm. and um so then when i told him then he was he kept hugging my tummy like oh. my tummy is oh, baby, baby baby this is before i even had a bump yeah like he was just doing it anyway yeah so it was really cool because he knew that there was a baby going up in there so he mm. was already connected and close with her from mm. the gate because obviously mum's stomach is like at here and um yeah when she when it got to that like the end stages he was we'd say you know when's Asia coming or Asia's coming where the baby Aww. well not even <laughs> let me lie let me not even lie and say Asia because at that time we had a whole heap of names oh my god it was Aaliyah, Amaya, Amira, <laughs> Ashanti there were so many names that he was gonna name her. yeah so um yeah, but she, he and then when when it actually came to the like physical meeting, mm -hmm. um, the day of the birth, he was at his granddad's house. So Raheem was at his granddad's house. Mm -hmm. So the next day, we came home from hospital about midnight, and he Ryan went to get Raheem from his dad's house, Raheem's granddad, my father-in-law, and he came to the house and he came in the door. Mm -hmm. And initially, we were like, yeah, now we're gonna do a big thing. Like we're gonna make a big surprise. You know, we're gonna reveal the baby um in this special way we hadn't figured out what we were like yeah we're gonna make it a big thing like see your sister <laughs> and i was so tired i had the baby in my hand i opened the door oh, hi babe here's your sister <laughs> there she is what did you say <laughs> that was that special <laughs> delivery <laughs> surprise um oh, that was wow. it that was how we introduced our baby um this one right here. That's how we introduced her. Yeah, she's trying to call out she's the bouncer. Like, yeah, she's trying to do all kinds of stuff right now. Ooh. So, oh. So um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are, I think, another thing that I really like. No one really told me was going to be so long. Mm -hmm. Was. Oh please, don't distress me. Like I'm at a stage now where it's just like 
he's so close yeah. to being fully trained because mm -hmm. he uses the potty. He uses the toilet now, actually. We've got the little chair that goes on the toilet. That is a fantastic. And he has his stall. Yeah. So he can use the toilet fine. In yeah. the day when we're in the house, he uses the toilet. But then there are them times when you go out. And then where do you do? You can't use the toilet all the time. It's a long car journey, guys. Um, then there are the times at night time. Do I really want to change in sheets every day? That, that, that stage, that jump. Yeah. It's mental. <sighs> I find this mental. My first son, um... I had a horrid experience. I was in the kitchen washing dishes and he was in the front room. Yeah. And I just smelt this overwhelming smell of no poo. Way. So I quit what I was doing in the kitchen and I yeah, ran like into that. the front room to find yeah, a like poo that. mess and this boy. And I was just traumatized. I was traumatized from that experience. Yeah, he must have probably twice. Never recovered. That cleanup job was just awful. Yeah. And, no. um, mm -mm. I decided to bypass the potty with my second boy due to that actually. I bypassed the potty just so the he was seat. straight on the seat on the yeah. toilet mm -hmm. and we just went from there. And he's now at the stage where he's ready to start going to bed without the pull up. That's really And good. because there's, well, three of them now, when we're out and one of them needs to go to the toilet, we all go to the toilet. And how old are your children again? Uh, well, deal with five, mm -hmm. the three. Five. And 17 going 18 months. Okay. So we just all get into that big cubicle and we work it out. Yeah. I can't even you know? imagine doing that. Yeah. That yeah. Is to come for me because my yeah. friend is a bit younger. You get used to it. You get used to it. Once you once you get your mind there, mm -hmm. you just do it. You yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Because it's for their growth and development. Yeah. Because I feel well. like I'm sure that once we just say no to the nappies, it will be a couple wet beds, it will be a couple spillages on the floor, but. I think there. that will be the big thing. I think when even when we were beginning, mm -hmm. it was it took a while for him to do that first wee. Yeah. Once he done that first wee, then it was like, okay, cool, give you very rewarding for that wee. Yeah. And then it was like, yeah, potty, potty. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's when it started. But it took a while for mm -hmm. that first wee to actually get in the potty. <laughs> it was yeah. Long. It was a long thing. <laughs> yeah. Perseverance. Get there in the end. Get there in the end. Yeah. <laughs> and once you do, it's done. Yeah. You know? So True. yeah, until you got more and next. Yeah. yeah, I wonder how my girl would do. That's the That's going to be well. interesting. When I had Raheem, I was actually aware of. Oh, he's a boy. Actually, so silly because it doesn't make a difference now. But I was like, oh, how am I going to teach him how to use the toilet? Because he's a boy. They use the toilet the same when they're that age. But for some reason, <laughs> I was thinking I'm going to teach him how to shoot an aim. Like, oh, come on. <laughs> why i was thinking that i really don't oh, but um it's funny though he does um try to to do it like big people mm -hmm. and i'm like child you ain't got the the, the, the skill there you just sit down please yeah <laughs> yeah that's you know, best yeah that's yeah. best <laughs> oh, wow. but um yeah no one really told me about that no one yeah, really mentions yeah. push it just happens you just get to go and by yourself yeah do you yeah. do yeah yeah that's not i, I don't like that bit too much yeah. it can be fun you get them involved, you get them excited and stuff, it can be fun. But um, yeah, I'm still traumatized from that uh, experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah. Yeah. So our next topic that no one really told us about was sleep jeans. Yeah, sleep jeans. Guys, sleep jeans are important because you need to sleep as a mother. But babies don't want to sleep. They don't want to sleep in their own bed. They don't want to sleep through the night, so you have to implement a routine. How did you implement good sleeping patterns? Okay, uh, I did some experimentation mm -hmm. with my first son. Um, I was just so overwhelmed and in love and <laughs> I wanted him around me all the time. So when I went to bed, he went to bed. I didn't have a bedtime routine as such, other than reading, and that's really proven to be great because yeah. my first son is a prolific reader. He yeah. reads very well, so that was really important in incorporating that in a bedtime routine. The second son's coming along in reading as well. And also, even though my daughter's, my daughter's 18 months, she's reading alongside us, repeating words and such like, so the reading was really good. So he went to bed when I went to bed, whatever time that was. Um, I, I didn't send him to nursery, he stayed at home with me. So my lifestyle allowed for that. Um, I'm very much an advocate for uh, co-sleeping. So I co-sleep, or co have co-slept with all of the children 
um, thus far really um, and it works for us it works for us especially in breastfeeding um, that was one of the main things as well it was just so easy I didn't have sleepless nights and all that kind of stuff because the baby was right there breast is right there they're good I'm good yeah. <laughs> that was See, it's interesting because that is where me and my sister differ uh -huh. that's where we part bridges uh -huh. I <laughs> am a light sleeper I can't sleep with mm. the baby under my armpit <laughs> and then I'm feeling like I might roll on her oh. and she can't go in the middle because my husband will roll over her <laughs> so <sorry. laughs> if I have her in the bed oh, no gosh. one's going to really sleep but her and oh. that doesn't really work so I from the gate <laughs> never had them in the bed for the night I would feed them if they woke up and wanted to be fed then yeah sure feed them then they go back to their bed mm -hmm. like i'm not sleeping when they go to my bed i couldn't do it um <laughs> I, I i i i i i she couldn't do it I, yeah i couldn't do it <laughs> and it's, it's funny because when it but then again when it came to like he got his own room yes it was it was a smooth transition when he came to when we got the house and he had his own room it was just like okay go to bed <laughs> first night second night it wasn't a big thing um what i did find is that in his room yeah for him to get comfortable in his room it took a lot of time for me to be in there with him before yes. i could just put him in his room and say because he was like well, this is not who what room is this this is the storage is Where is everybody? This is spare room <laughs> what is this <laughs> so i had to go in there and play with him in the room and mm -hmm. do abcs with him in his room and just be with him in his room yes for him to be comfortable with the fact that that was his room yeah. um but yeah that was all right and luckily um there were some nights i'm not gonna lie where he would like climb out of his cot when he got to the age where he could climb out of his cot yeah that was a um that was, it was funny because he used to like get out of his cot and we didn't know he could climb out of the cot so he'd be getting out of his cot and then like he'd be at the door looking at us like <laughs> This time he couldn't really talk that much. <laughs> so he was just standing there at the door with his little head. And I'm just like, what? how did you even get out of there? Did you unzip the zip? What did you do? Um, so that was fun. But um, yeah, getting him to sleep through the night was another long thing because Raheem didn't sleep through the night until he was at least one and like five months. Mm -hmm. He was still waking up for milk. At the time. I was still breastfeeding and said he was like one and a, one and a month I was breastfeeding and he would wake up for milk at like four or five times a night for milk at one years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That can happen with breastfed babies actually. I know everybody always, you know, has this notion that from a certain age they're supposed to sleep all throughout the night yeah. and stuff like that. But I do find that breastfed babies tend to wait and want the breast, you know, as a comfort as well as for the food. But um when it got to the stage for them to transition into their bedroom, mm -hmm. now that was interesting because um, I had to do it gradually. I go through the bedtime routine, which is bed, uh, well, get in, the, get in the bed, got them in the bed. Then we would um, say prayer, read story, kisses, kisses and hugs and lights out. But I had to kind of edge my way out of the room. I couldn't just switch off the light and go. <laughs> it all hell, all <laughs> hell would break loose. So I had to sit there with them for a little bit at the side of the bed, then go from the side of the bed to the to bottom the of the bed. bed, then go from the bottom of the bed to the side of the room near the door, then by the door and then outside. And that probably took about a good two months or so. Yeah. And then right. they were cool. I could just do the bedtime routine, kiss, hug, good night, and go about my business. But it took some serious training for them to be able to accept and adjust to that. Yeah, see, I was having that kind of stuff. See, it was good night. Here's your hot chocolate. Ask the Larissa. <laughs> he used to come out a few times, and his dad would say, Good night. Here's your chocolate. Hasta la vista. <laughs> um, first of all, he was going to be like, you know, all right, because I spent a month slapping the table because of bed. And then he went in there one day and he said, all right, I'm here now. It's night time. All right, I'm going to have a good sleep. Got your hot chocolate. Good night. All right, see you. I'm trying to do a deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're here. It's night time. <laughs> I'm going to go sleep. I'll see you in the morning. All right. Love you, yeah. Good night. And he gave him a hug and he gave him a kiss. Aww. And he went to bed and he stayed in the bed and he was like, oh, I'm going to slap him and pretend to go to sleep. But that seemed to work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was. And um, that was it. 
sleeping in his bed. Although now I'm not gonna lie, every now and then if he's go if he's had a late nap, like last night he had a nap at around six. Mm. And so when he went to bed, because we had to leave early this morning, we put him to bed at like yeah ten. Mm -hmm. And he did get up a few times and go, Mom, I'm awake. I'm awake, Mom. Dad, I'm awake. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> Let him. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> I'm not sleeping dead. <laughs> I'm awake. Oh wow, that's funny because my eldest boy woke up um gosh about five o'clock or something this morning. Yeah. He was he was excited about PE. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he used to get up even when he's sleeping his night, he did used to get up in the early morning and come in our bed mm -hmm. and just go back to sleep until we woke up and like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do that. Yeah, no, we stopped that about two months ago. Okay. Not I early morning. I can't sleep in with them in the bed. I can't sleep. Uh-uh. And that, that, morning, <laughs> that, that sleep in the early morning is sweet. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> Mine come in, not in the early morning, later. Like, um, say, maybe when my eldest son gets up, Kalik, mm -hmm. he, he'll be milling about, and then his brother will get up, and he'll come and lie down in the bed. And then two twosies out anyway, he's not in there for a, a, long, a long sleep or anything. But yeah, yeah. some of the things that you go through. Yeah. Mm. So those are our little things that we could compare notes on and figure out, you know, everyone does things differently. So, you know, on this channel, it's not like we're advocating this is the way to do things. I didn't want it to be a preachy video. Mm. I didn't want it to be me kind of giving you advice because I'm still learning. Sisters, my sister's still learning. It's Everyone is. Yeah, motherhood yeah. is something that you try to pick up as you go along. And every child needs different things. So mm -hmm. something that may work with one child, like I say, and Ryan said, okay, he was soft with him, and he was just like, okay, go sleep, good night. Mm -hmm. She said, mm -hmm, with what child? That wouldn't mean it's so look for her child. So everyone's different. So um, yeah, we just wanted to share some yes. um, real life talk with you guys. Um, what happens when you're a mom, when you've got multiple children mm -hmm. and you've got to juggle these life things? Mm -hmm. It's real out here. But there's also good stuff, lots yeah, of good there's stuff. Great stuff. You know, like um, when my children do pick and, and give me flowers. <laughs> Which I'm still waiting. <laughs> I'll be waiting for the flowers. Oh, the beautiful hugs when they come and you know tell you what? that they love you. That's nice. Because oh, sometimes I like hurt myself and I'll yes. be like exaggeratingly like trying to get my husband to give me attention. Like, ow, oh, oh my god, you stepped on my foot. And then and then, Raheem, and then it's like, Yeah. He will nothing. Come up. Yeah. <laughs> nothing there. And then he will come and go. Oh, Oh, mum, it's okay. Oh, oh don't worry, mum. And he'll come and give me a hug and he'll rub it. Is it hurting, mum? Oh, don't worry. <laughs> and he'll give me a hug. He's so lovely. So, oh, yeah, that's oh, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. No, <laughs> just watching and observing the children is you just learn so much. They can teach you so much, your children, if you pay attention and just, you know. Yeah, yeah, see how they deal with things and deal with each other and such like it's just beautiful yeah. it's beautiful i wouldn't change being a mom at all beautiful me neither i second that notion sister <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's all for the video today we got thanks to do children to feed and stuff so we're gonna sign out thank you for watching this video like share comment and subscribe to my channel and subscribe to her channel as well our channel will be in the link below or it might come up under the screen black, black to my roots check it out definitely for sure subscribe to her channel like share her video she's got some some amazingly great tips for motherhood even relationships um some recipes beauty. for yeah <laughs> beauty some recipes for little ones her channel is amazing guys so go over there and subscribe what are you waiting for and without further ado we're out peace uh, <coughs> reality of things <laughs> 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 yeah, so it just could, it just yeah, it just could, it's just here trying to breastfeed when you're recording a YouTube video. Oh. <laughs> <One minute. laughs>